Oh, well, hello and welcome back to the channel. I appreciate I've been a bit absent recently, but um, I had some time off. <laughs> Who would have thought uh, what fun I had? But it is Saturday. I mean, you don't know about that. It's very dull. Uh, but here we are, Saturday in July, and I'm happy to report we've had loads of rain and it's blowing a hooli out there, which means there's been a little bit of damage. And it being Saturday afternoon, what I tend to do is I work all week. So I do admin on Mondays, teach on Tuesdays, uh, harvest on th Wednesdays and Thursdays, floristry Thursdays and Fridays. When do I do my flower farming? Mostly at the weekend. And um, the nice thing about July is I've sort of the, the marathon of seed sowing, pricking out, planting out, and all of that is nearly, is, is pretty much done. There are some things to do, so I thought you might like to come along with me this afternoon and we'll do a few of the jobs I've got to do. But before I do anything else, this is a victim of the blowing wind. It's a wonderful pink salvia and it was blown, it's been blown over. So I'm going to take some cuttings. It's a little bit early for cutting taking, but waste not one nod at all times. So what I'm going to do is... I have here hormone rooting powder and my branch and I'll show you what I do with them. Now if you're new to the channel please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up and if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful you can always buy me a coffee or better still join my club. The links to coffee buying and club joining are in the blurb to all my clips. Right, let's get on. So what I'm going to do is I have got some hormone rooting powder here because I used it for my dahlias earlier and it was very successful earlier in the year. It was very successful, so I'm going to use it again. I have pots with some nice damp compost, slightly tamped down, very gently, and I've got these this very nice branch of this gorgeous salvia. And you can see that the space between each leaf is quite a long way. So I'm not going to do the normal thing, which would be cut under each leaf node to make the cutting. I am going to cut a little bit further in the middle, but because I've got my hormone rooting powder, I think I'm gonna be all right. Importantly, so I'm going about halfway down. You're too far away. No, I'm going about halfway down like this. Very important, take off a lot of the large leaves because they will you need enough to photosynthesize, but not so much that the leaves are going to wilt. I could take off a bit more. There you are. And simple dip and into the side of the pot. The reason you put your cuttings in the side of the pot is because when the plant produces roots it forces them downwards and there's more moisture towards the bottom it's good it'll stop it drying out um, you will see there is there are the odd actual side shoot which I could take a cutting from so here is a side shoot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that off and Pulling it off, I've sort of been a bit rough with it. So it's got a little bit, I've sort of, it's damaged, if you like. Take off these side leaves, pull out the growing tip, snip half the leaves off. Dip in the hormone rooting powder and tuck in the side of the pot and so on. So I'm going to carry on and I'll show you when I've finished. Right, not millions of them, but enough uh, that they should, they should take. The 
I have I put the compost outside for a couple of nights. You can see how much rain we've had. So I filled the pots, left them outside. I knew I was going to do this. And um, so the compost had a really good soaking and I don't need to water again for a while. If you're going to do this, the other thing to make sure you do is to pinch out any growing tips. So I've just gone round with my snips and just taken out the growing tips because then the plant should put the energy into rooting down and we'll see how they go. I don't need a great kind of, I'm not doing this for flower farming. This is because I love this particular salvia. Um, I think it's called something Hadspun. It's pink, very, very hot pink, long flower head with pink veins to the leaves. And I love the pink veins in the leaves. And it smells, when you bruise, bruise the leaves, it smells like black, black currants. It's delicious. I love the smell of salvias. Anyway, so I can now put these, I will, I'll put them in the shade. I probably won't, I won't put them in the greenhouse. It's too hot, uh, the too strong differential, differential temperature. Uh, but I'll put them in the shade outside the polytunnel just to just sit there quietly and get on with themselves. And I won't bother them. I'll just leave them for quite a long time. Right, next job. Right. So do you remember when we took, I did a, um, I did a demo about sowing biennials uh, in mid-June and here we are in mid-July and as I foresaw, astonishingly, they're all ready for pricking out. So my job for this afternoon is to take the contents of these seed trays and rationalise them. Some of them are quite big. So these hollyhocks, for example, they can have a pot of their own each because they're going to get quite big before I plant them out at the end of the summer. But the smaller ones... This is apricot foxglove, very hard to sow sparingly. I will prick up into this tray, so they'll, but I'll just rationalize them so that they're all in rows and um, I haven't got hundreds of them. <laughs> I only need about 30, so I'll, I'll rationalize them. So I've got about 30, right. Sometimes people think it's a bit weird that I use these deep trays. These are like double depth trays. And they say that surely I'm wasting compost. But what happens is if I sow seed into them, the seed then germinates and sort of comes up wherever it likes. I can then prick out back into the tray. So I'm going to do it so you can see what I'm doing because these wallflower seedlings are quite big. If I do it with the foxgloves, you won't see, but I take a pair of scissors or a shot or a knife or a, anything that's handy. These are my cutting snips, but they're multi-purpose. And I dig into my tray. There's my little seedling. And I'm gonna move it up because I want them to be evenly spaced. so that they, their roots have got some space for each other, for themselves. There we are. This is a nice perennial wallflower that actually is going to go in the beds outside my back door. Uh, and when I've finished, I'll show you. This is why I wear an apron at all times, because then I've got something to wipe my hands on. There you are, flower farmer chic at all times. There. Oh, tea cake. Nice tidy rows of three and they'll be ready for planting out in about a month uh, towards the end of August. So we're mid-July now. So yeah, month, six weeks to planting out. They'll be fine. Oh, there's tidy. Right, go and get the next lot. Didn't they look sweet?
They're the little foxgloves, you see? They start off really, really little, but you prick them out. Now, they seem to double in size within five minutes of being pricked out. Everything likes being pricked out. Everything, really everything goes, oh, thanks very much. I've got some space now and I feel much more like somebody's paying attention and off we go. So look, they are here in the shade. It's just a bit of um, rubble mesh over them. And you might think, well, surely they want to be in bright sunshine, but actually it can be very hot in the you know high summer sorry i'm not wearing my microphone naughty um but it can be very hot so i keep them in the shade because if they were germinating the natural time of year they'd be germinating in the autumn so if you leave biennials to set seed the seed will mature through the summer and they might shed their seed in the autumn and if the seed is going to germinate in the autumn, the plants won't be big enough to flower next year, so they take another year, which is why they're biennial. It takes two years. So we've tricked them, but leaving them in the shade means that they're not going to suffer from strong summer heat. Anyway, there you go. Right, Sunday morning. I have one hour because I have child one needs to go and be dropped at a train station to visit a friend. Child two is taken to go to the Roman Catholic Church in Wincanton. <clears throat> He's a searcher. It's good. Um, and he needs to be dropped off there with his friend. And I need to stake my dahlias. A bit late, but it's better late than never. Uh, you will need, if you're going to do it the way that I do it, I do it a kind of cat's cradle of string. You'll need some stakes, some good jute string, a pair of scissors. And what I do is I just make like a line around each row and a little zigzag through. I am late to the party for this because you can see how tall they are. So I'm going to have to be careful not to break stems and try not to bruise or bash them too much. So it's taking me longer than it should do. I should have done this a fortnight ago. Boom. <laughs> Comme d'habitude. So I'm keeping it really simple. I have a, it's called a pigtail spike. You can get them at builder's yards. They have curly ends, look. Makes it useful for tying things too. So I have one at each end of the row. And one in the middle of the row. These two rows are shorter for no good reason. So I've amalgamated them into one cat's cradle thing, but the rest of them are one pigtail spike at each end and one pigtail spike in the middle or um, this is electric fencing posty thing of which we have a large selection and now I'm going to take my what my lovely jute string and the first thing you do is run round the outside of each row very very important that you go around the outside because what you're trying to do is to stop the dahlias falling outside and then you go on a zigzag across, having made yourself a nice circle, you do a zigzag across each one, tying as you go, because if you don't tie and you inadvertently snip as you're harvesting later in the season, then you, and you cut one piece of string, then the whole cat's cradle collapses. So you have to keep tying as you go. Um, right, on we go. So I've gone around the edge and now I'm going to go cat's crazel across. Should I put it on a wiggly wiggly thing and then you can see it? You know, the speedy uppy thing. Okay, I'll do that. So there we have it. It's a very simple cat cra cat's cradle. Look, you can see the string. It's not fancy pants and it's not especially tight. It'll be easy to, to harvest through, but just give them a little bit of support. It's very sheltered here. We're between two hedges. 
it's just when they get very heavy if there's a windy night the thing with dahlias if, if they're heavy and they've got flowers on them and there's a big wind and there's been some rain those hollow stems snap very very easily anyway there you go that's i'll just go on with the rest of it now i've got to get on <laughs> right while we're down here uh this is the bed ewan are you here <laughs> I have a lovely, lovely uh, interlocutor called Ewan, who quite often makes remarks about these beds. Anyway, this is where I was weeding in the spring. Do you remember? And you said, are you ever going to finish weeding that bed? Well, eventually we did. And then we had bluebells and ornithogalum newtans here. And now the perennial phlox is just flowering and it's interspersed with a lot of self-sown feverfew, which I harvest and harvest and harvest and there are more gladioli there which will flower after the glads in the other patch a little bit of the better banariensis the tall purple can you see there tall purple people um being much loved by the butterflies and in the background there is a blue salvia perennial salvia called salvia uglinosa and a very very good actual sky blue for late summer brilliant foil for the dahlias i don't have huge amount of are you the 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 place where it was got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so uh we got rid of about two-thirds of it this year but i've still got enough to do those autumn weddings it's really really useful um and i'll show you the polytunnels come on so this is the big tunnel and this was the spring crops which we've been hammering at for a couple of months um, and these are all ready for clearing and some of my biennials are going to come in here for overwintering so i will have in the spring i will have my ranunculus in here uh, some of my foxglove some of my sweet rocket some of my honesty and we'll see about the sweet peas for next year you gotta, you gotta kind of think. You don't have to do the same thing every year. You can change your mind and develop and become a different kind of flower farmer. Um, you don't have to, just because you do one thing like this, you don't have to do it forever the same way. This tunnel is ready for a cutback too. Uh, these sweet peas can go. I know they look nice from a distance, but up close, they're not good enough for cutting anymore. I have really nailed them. I mean, I have cut and cut and cut from these sweet peas. So time to get rid of those because in here, and when we clear out things like, look, the ami <laughs> can go, um, and the sweet peas behind me, I've also got tomato plants. And then the tomatoes can grow through and ripen because they won't be shaded out by anything else. And on that side over there, I've got chilies. And at the moment they're being rather shaded out by the by the sweet peas, but we'll take the sweet peas out and then the tomatoes, the chilies and the aubergines, get me, um, can ripen through the rest of July and August and into September. And then, you know, we start it all again. I like the sweet peas in here, I have to say. I think uh, next year, my sweet peas will, I will do all of my sweet pea crop in here. Um, and then I'll kind of underplant it with the late summer vegetables <laughs> that like a bit of heat. And it's a good use of space and I'm happy with that. So, you know, you've got to, it's worth, it's worth rearranging things all the time. Every year think, oh, this worked, I like this, I didn't like this. I won't do that again. I'm bored with that. It's time to do something different. And here in the pitch by yard as well, the early, annuals and the early biennials are all pretty much over and so again we're rearranging the crops but i've got loads coming up for the late for the late summer so to go with those dahlias and the verbena bonariensis and the phlox uh, i'll show you what i've got going in here i love this patch because apart from the builder's lavatory for the project <laughs> charming imagine it's going to be a great view through that's paniculata hydrangea in the behind the builder's lavatory there um 
So I have a little patch of roses which are ready for a cut back and a feed. Uh, this red, tall red person is a triplex rubra or New Zealand dock, uh, depending on who you are and where you live. Um, lots more lovely nigella seed heads for harvesting and drying. The uh, cosmos is beginning to come. I've probably taken a couple of hundred stems off it, weirdly. Uh, it doesn't look much, but um, that's because I harvest it quite hard. Uh, but for next weekend's wedding, <clears throat> I think we'll have plenty. Um, I have been hammering the poor old, <laughs> the poor old gladiola. I've taken a hammering from the wind a bit. But again, they keep on flowering. They keep coming. There are loads and loads and loads of stems to come. So what I'll do is I'll just cut back what's fallen over and got bashed and keep going with what keeps coming. Uh, more nigella. There's always masses of nigella and the seed heads are very, very popular. Uh, I don't tend to cut the flowers much, really, weirdly. Um, more foxgloves for next year. These are self-sown and I've kept them, waste not, want not. Lovely calendula. Uh, again, <laughs> I don't really grow much calendula, but when I have it, I'm always really pleased to see it. So I don't, I just, I just have a little bit from time to time. The petals, so long as they've not been sprayed with anything, are delicious in salads as well. They have a nice peppery flavor. Uh, more foxgloves, a little bit of direct sown ammy. This yellow is hunger. It's been a very weird season. Curiously enough, a few extra dahlias which I had left over, so I popped them in here where I had space. And look at this. I haven't grown I haven't grown sunflowers on purpose for years. Anyway. <laughs> This one's obviously an old sunflower that's popped up from old seed. And this is um, self-sown self -sown sweet rocket for next spring. So I'll keep that here. And then the seeds, the seedlings will go into the polytunnel. And look, ladybirds everywhere. When you look, look, one. And then there's another little beetle there and another little beetle there and all over the place curious little beetles those don't look like they're kind of ladybird shape but not ladybird colors i wonder i'll take a photograph and ask fabrizio what they are but there are many of them many 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 of them how interesting and then we have lots of zinnias and millet looks like grass and not a cash crop cobia scandens and more cosmos and ami visnaga ami magus lots and lots of my beloved amaranth bells of ireland these this is monada very oddly all yellow not what i sewed <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, Statis, uh, and so on, all the way back. It's good. I, I'm, I'm not unhappy with this combination. I feel as though I'm okay. More amaranthus, bat-faced kufea. Yes, it is. And on. Right. Time to take a child to the bus, the train. I don't often film the house, but I'm quite pleased with my outdoor pots this year. Look, I've got this lovely red salvia. The agapanthus have done okay because Fabrizio has been feeding them. And then, oh, white hollyhocks. And behind the white hollyhocks, morning glory, galumphing its way up to climb over the chair, which Fabrizio found being given away to a good home on the street in fashionable Bruton the other day. And uh, we always have, Fabrizio is a keen carver, so we have things like scary heads outside the back door. Um, and then this I love. This is the this is the salvia that I was taking cuttings from yesterday. It's as tall as me. Look how beautiful and very good with my red glasses, I think. Mm. 
And then as I walk up, I do like that we've got dry patches and look at the, the cornflowers that have sown themselves in here and they're growing very short on account of very little early summer rain and a little daisy cushioning up. Sweet, isn't it? Don't be too tidy. Your garden will like you and give you things in return for not being too tidy. Look, masses, ladies' bed straw, so called because it smells delicious and you can put it in your mattress of your medieval lady and it will scent your bedroom deliciously. Wild carrot, uh, which has made itself very much at home along this little patch, along with wild achillea and the carrot shouldn't do so well here because we're very thick clay hello uh, but look at this it's really happy so have a bit of long grass and see what you get because our long grass is full of bees and butterflies and wasps and hoverflies there's a hoverfly there and butterflies everywhere you won't get wildlife unless you give them a habitat little brown butterflies very hard to film all over the place You can see that they're just like gangs of them flitting about. They're hot to film. So we're now up in the patch that we call the Lady Smock, where the shrubs and perennials are. The roses are kind of have, are just settling down to have their mid-season rest. They'll get a cut back and a tidy. Um, and there are lots and lots of perennials to cut. There's the project, <laughs> tiptoeing along very slowly, but I'll show you some detail. So I often do this at the end of the sowing season. If I've got some seed left over, I'll just fling it in the ground, zinnias, and they won't flower till well into September, into maybe October, but that's okay. They'll be useful. Um, and the other self-sown people here, the frothy people are uh, California poppies, Eschulzia. This lovely midsummer rain we've had has been absolutely fantastic for the shrubs. It's like they've give, get, it's given them a really, really good water. So look at this happy looking uh, Physocarpus darts gold. And then we've got some um, leucanthemums. The white hydrangeas are paniculata limelight. Very happy. Uh, time to cut back the Alcamilla, you can see there, uh, for um, maybe a, just a few more stems in the autumn. The Achillea, pink, very good, useful. Nice, just the odd stem to come of this gorgeous, of the geums, which I really love. And they're just like accents through colour all through the year. Helenium's ready for cutting next weekend's wedding. As you can see, I've been quite hard on the old on the old Echinops, but that's okay. Uh, they are sort of a trial to see how they'll do in our thick clay, and I think they're gonna be okay, so we might put some more of those in. Um, the stripy grass could do with a mow, and that'll come back. Lots and lots of sedum, very good as, I like it sort of now to be green. I don't love it so much when it's in pink, big pink flower heads, I like it at that stage. The hard heads, Allium spherocephalum, spell that when you've had a couple of shandies. Very, very popular with bees, as you can see. I have to say, it looks nice, doesn't it? If I shut up for a minute, you can hear them.
the echinacea is not, are not as tall as they usually are because it's been so dry, but this rain has meant they didn't die on me. They tried, but they've hung on in there, but not enormously long stems. I do love this um, beautiful field of gold achillea. Dries very nicely. I love that mustard colour. This is a gorgeous um, verbena, thank you, uh, which sees itself everywhere, but I do love it, so I'm not unhappy about that. The Eschultzia, which I haven't cut so far, I will cut for drying. Look at that, gorgeous. And on we go. You can see where I've been cutting the mint all summer, but the stems I haven't cut that got away from me are flowering. Isn't that lovely? This is apple mint, the stripy one that's not such a bull, not such a bully, uh, has to work its way through a bit. It's not so successful. But look at this person. This is chocolate and it has a really lovely purple flower any minute, which the, the bees really adore. And it's, again, it's good that dark, it smells delicious. Uh, that dark color is very good with late summer flowers. <laughs> I think the, the Bonica could do with a cutback, don't you? I mean, the Rosa Bonica. I'm a very, very big fan of this small blue Eryngium. It's called Silver Cup or Blue Cup or something. Um, covered in little beetles and hovering with hoverflies. Uh, but also really, really good for bu buttonholes and corsages. Um, oh, excuse me. Don't want to disturb. And another one dearly, dearly beloved of the bees is this Veronicastrum. Uh, dearly beloved of me also. It's, it's really a great favourite of mine. Um, look at that. Ready for harvesting for drying, the limonium. And still some roses, but kind of opportunistic amounts. Here's Queen of Sweden, looking very fine, though I say it myself. And there we have it, my friends. A little tour of the flower farm in July. Some pricking out, some potting on, some cuttings, taking. And now it's coming on to rain again. And it is today, the 16th of July. Yesterday was St. Swithin's Day. And I made a short of the rain splashing down into the water butt. If it rains, the old wives tale is that if it rains on St. Swithin's Day, which is 15th of July, it will rain every day and every night for 40 days and 40 nights. Not all day and all night, but there will be rain every day and every night for 40 days and 40 nights, which basically means they're going to have a cool July and August. I will be very happy if it rains through this summer because our water table is depleted after years of drought and we need water in the ground more than I need perfect flowers. So even though my business is predicated upon having perfect flowers to sell, my business is less important than the planet because I will be gone one day. But I hope that the bees and the butterflies and the populations of all the invertebrates that we have here will be going strong generations after I've gone. Anyway, I'm getting wet. <laughs> so I'll see you all soon. Bye.